Good Wednesday morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, December 13th, 2023, and we start at 6 a.m. Eastern Time with a Fox News alert. As you can see, a potentially perilous day for the Biden family. House Republicans threatening to hold Hunter Biden, the son of the president, in contempt of Congress if he skips a closed door deposition set to begin at 930 this morning. That's scary music that you requested, Steve. Also today, the House GOP is set to hold a vote on whether to launch a formal impeachment inquiry against the president. House Judiciary Commandment, uh, Committee Chairperson Jim Jordan joins us later to discuss that and more. And that's the headshot he gave us. Plus, Nikki Haley picking up a major endorsement ahead of next month's primary in the Granite State. I finally endorse Nikki Haley for president. You bet your I am. Don't go anywhere. Haley and New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu will join us live on Fox and Friends for an exclusive. That's right. But first, let's go right to Lucas Thomason in Washington with the latest on the high stakes proceeding on Capitol Hill. Hey, Lucas. Good morning, Steve Ainsley, Brian and Lawrence. That's the big question this morning. Will Hunter Biden show up? We bet we'll have our camera staking out the Capitol, waiting to see if that black SUV arrives with the president's son. Last night on Special Report, House Speaker Mike Johnson explained why he's moving forward with that impeachment inquiry vote. The White House has stonewalled this investigation. It's gone methodically, carefully, as the Constitution requires of us. It's a very serious matter. But right now, they're not turning over documents. They're not turning over key witnesses. And we'll have to uh, defend our subpoenas in court. So to do that, you need an impeachment inquiry vote from the full House. We'll have that tomorrow. I believe it'll pass. Now, President Biden has not discussed his son's second indictment, at least not publicly. Recall back in May, he said his son had done nothing wrong. And then late last week, Hunter Biden was indicted on nine tax charges in California that include three felonies and six misdemeanors. That's in addition to the federal gun charges in Delaware. The new tax charges centered around at least $1.4 million in taxes Hunter owed between 2016 and 2019 and have since been paid. If convicted, the 53-year-old could receive up to seven 17 years in prison. His lawyer says the special counsel is bowing to Republican pressure. Now, Karl Rove recently said President Biden claims he was not involved in his son's overseas businesses, but perhaps he should have been to stop him from working for that Ukrainian energy company when his father was vice president, guys. That's so where boring. is he now, Lucas? He's somewhere in Washington. I mean, do we... He left yeah, California. The, He's in so, I mean, right? that is an indication he could be coming today. That's right. If he flew all the way from Malibu, it's probably not to take a White House tour, guys. <laughs> right. Although he can get that any time. attorneys are saying, though, they don't want him to testify, right? But if he doesn't, he's held in contempt of Congress. But if he does, he can always plead the fifth, right? That's right. And that's another thing everybody's going to be looking at. If he does show up, will he be pleading the fifth? Ainsley? Sure, because his attorney has said, you know, he called the bluff of the Republicans and said he will testify in public on TV, but the Republicans say, no, we got to go through it on pr uh, privately beforehand. Hunter Biden's lawyer said and that's problematic because then there are leaks and stuff like that. But don't you think, Lucas, given the fact that, and you just detailed those uh, criminal uh, indictments against Hunter Biden revealed at the end of last week, don't you think Abby Lowell would be able to say, you know what, guys, can't do it today because we got to resolve all this other stuff with the Department of Justice first. Lawyers always have a way of uh, stretching things out. You're right, Steve. Speaking of the Department of Justice, Lucas, is there any chance if, you know, Congress holds them in contempt that the Department of Justice enforces the contempt here? Uh, something we'll definitely be looking for, uh, Lawrence. It's uh, definitely a sticky situation. It we'll we'll sure have to is. wait and see this morning. Lucas, you regret all the questions we gave you this morning. Were you hoping just to get in and out? And I think we just have to watch to see if Hunter shows up. I think that's what uh, we have to do this morning. And take I'll do there. that. All right, thank that's you. why we have cables. Thanks, Lucas. Okay, well, first we have the caucuses in January in Iowa. I think you guys are going to that to cover it for Fox yeah. and Friends. And then we have the New Hampshire primary. It's the first primary in the country. And we have six weeks to go for that. Yesterday was a big day for Nikki Haley because she was endorsed by the New Hampshire Governor Sununu. Listen to this. This is hit him announcing he's supporting her, and then she comments as well. With a sweet older woman who has come to a lot of events. And I saw her coming in here, and she said, so are you going to finally endorse Nikki Haley for president? You bet your a I am. Let's get this thing done. We are all in on Nikki Haley, undoubtedly. It doesn't get any better than this. To go and get endorsed by the live free or die governor is about as rock solid of an endorsement as we could hope for. 
Right, and that, that was tough because he's extremely popular in New Hampshire. You know, they got about 1.4 million people, and the question is, they, he would have won the election if he wanted to anyway. He's got to do it every two years. Uh, he doesn't want to do it, uh, so he's not coming back. He has said Chris Christie's a friend of his. He likes Ron DeSantis. Uh, he says, I like President Trump, but he does not feel Trump can win a general election. Right. So it is Nikki Haley. So the problem that they're going to run into, and if I could quickly go through it, the National Post has Donald Trump in the RCP average at 60%. DeSantis is at 12%. Haley's at 12%. <laughs> right. Then yeah, you go to point. Iowa, Donald Trump is at 50%. DeSantis is at 19% and Haley is at 15%. And DeSantis 15%. has that governor to endorsement. Exactly. Then you go to South Carolina. Trump is at 49%. Haley is at 19%. DeSantis is at 11%. Right. And everybody keeps saying, Lawrence, why do you keep citing the polls? The only time I don't believe the polls is if the polls don't reflect what's happening on the ground. Right. And I haven't sent, seen this massive movement for Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley. We've seen it before when people were right. against, you know, Brian Kemp as governor. Yeah. And I said, look, I know Donald Trump put up this primary opponent with Purdue, but people like Trump right. and they still like Kemp. I haven't seen that seen that with Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis. Even if one of them gets out of well, the especially race. Especially when and there's like a 30 point difference. Exactly. Then you if kinda one of do want to believe the polls. And says one of them gets out of the, uh, the race and, and all of their support goes to the other candidate. Mm -hmm. It's still not enough mm -hmm. to undo the support well, with Donald despite Trump. Despite who wins, the Republican, not if it's Nikki Haley or if it's Donald Trump, when you look at these, we did this yesterday, when you look at Georgia and Michigan and you look at other states head to head match up with Biden, both of them beat Biden. Mm -hmm. but, but, but Nikki Haley double Double yeah. digits. Yeah. Right, she yeah. does. And so it's curious, uh, going forward, there is one more debate. I think it's going to be in a, less than a month on CNN. It's going to be at Drake in Des Moines. Um, and Ron DeSantis has said, I'm in. The problem for all the other candidates, including Chris Christie, is CNN's standard is you've got to be polling at 10%. So there are only three Republicans who could actually qualify. Ron DeSantis does, Nikki Haley does, Donald Trump does. Ron DeSantis has already said, I'm in for the debate. Mm -hmm. uh, Nikki Haley's team has said, well, we've got a lot of opportunities we don't know yet, but if we go, Donald Trump should be there. And of course, Donald Trump uh, says, I'm go. way ahead. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to show. Do you think now that it's the... the, the what do you call it? The the contenders are getting smaller and smaller. Right. The group is getting smaller. The that he is will. The, yes. Do you think he'll participate in that last debate? In Donald Trump. It, it no. would be great. He would no. be able to put him away the way he he feels like he would be able to put him away. But he's so far ahead. You know, no incentive. It, 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 he's already put him away. Well, I mean, yeah. the, so, after endorsement, endorsement, they're still uh, not polling at any any closer. So also, the debate, if I recall. I don't think it has been uh, Brian sanctioned by the RNC. So uh, there's a lot of candidates in there that are going to be required to show up. Right. So uh, to the Trump campaign responded this way. Sununu's endorsement means nothing, does nothing for any candidate in the race. The only endorsement of politics that matters is President Trump's endorsement. Nothing will stop him from securing the nomination and beating crooked Joe Biden and retaking the White House. Well, Governor of Iowa didn't like Trump because he went after her because she said she's not going to endorse a candidate. A few months ago, so he right. went after her. So then she decided to endorse DeSantis. Same thing with Chris Sununu. He has been a star staunch critic of Donald mm -hmm. Trump's for months now, and or for years actually. So he, we didn't expect him to endorse Donald Trump. No. Will this help, Nikki? What Haley? I do appreciate by, about Chris Sununu is that he didn't lie to the public and say, "I'm going to be neutral." He made it very clear. He just was neutral. He, he, he said, "Look." I'm going to support someone at some point. I don't know when, but I'm going to do it. It's not going to be Donald Trump, but it's the person that I think is going to be best suited to win. Uh, you can disagree with him, but at least he didn't do but, what Kim Reynolds did and say, hey, I'm going to be neutral. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it like Chuck Grassley has already but, done. But, Lawrence, a big change from 2022 when Mastriano failed and Dr. Oz failed and Herschel Walker failed uh, and uh, Blake Masters failed. People thought Donald Trump and, and the rise of Ron DeSantis, people thought Donald Trump is beatable. Time has passed. He can't win the general. Mm -hmm. And now I don't know if you can make that argument nope. when you have five straight major polls yeah. having him win not only the battleground states that Biden flipped, but he has him winning well, four or five points. I know how quick things can change, but you can no longer say he can't win. You have to also look at why why Dr. Oz failed, why uh, Mastriano did. Mastriano was, terrible. was he was so strict. No, no, you cannot have an abortion. Doesn't matter what the situation is. And 
I think that hurt Dr. Oz. That had nothing to do with Donald Trump. Right, no, and but he forgot to campaign yeah. too, Mastriano, yeah. and raise money, oh, yeah. which tends to work too. against you. Well, Dr. Oz's biggest problem was he was running for a Senate seat in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. He lived in New Jersey. I know he had a family home there, but that was the rap, and that is exactly how we'll they beat. See if Dave McCormick has better luck. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.